I am a Sega fan. I have no shame in that statement. This company has made some of the very best games this hobby has ever seen. From my earliest memories, they have always provided me an experience that few companies have ever matched. In some of my darkest times, Sega was there. My fondest memories with friends often include a Sega game or two. And when my mother got her first decent paying job out of college, it was Sega that we celebrated with. I tell you these things without a shred of pretense. Sega was a major part of my life. With that kind of association comes an incredible amount of expectation. I want to see the company do well, of course, but I also want to see the games I loved so much as a kid treated with the respect due their pedigree. When Sega announced Sega Ages and Sega Forever a few years back, I was hopeful for a bright future. I mean, we had seen some great work with similar retro series in the past. From the Saturn, the PlayStation 2, the 3DS, all the way up to modern machines, there has been some excellent releases. Yet Sega seems to make the same mistake over and over again, dooming these releases to poor sales and ultimately abandoning them entirely. And it's happening all over again. The modern incarnation of Sega Ages began with releases in the latter half of 2018 for the Nintendo Switch. The lead-off was the very first Sonic game, which was nothing short of a head-scratcher no matter which way you look at it. Luckily, the next batch held a ton of promise. Thunder Force 4 showed up in all its glory, and some great ports of Fantasy Star and OutRun landed. Sega Ages hit a high point thanks to the stunning Virtual Racing update, by far the best home version of that game ever released. I mean, seeing this run gave me all the hope in the world that Sega was going to finally give us 100% arcade accurate Virtua Fighter and maybe a few other Model 1 and 2 arcade games. It wasn't meant to be, unfortunately, and Sega fell back on additions that Sega fans have seen all too often. We got Space Harrier, Fantasy Zone, Columns, Puzzle in Action, and yet another Sonic release. Any momentum built by the early titles was completely lost. Sega Ages releases should build and strengthen excitement, tantalizing its target audience with playing the very best, building to a final crescendo that makes owning every one an absolute must. Instead, the series was hobbled by filler releases that took all the air out of following the brand. Sega Ages games were released months apart, and when something like Puzzle in Action showed up, it meant that you went a while without even thinking about it. It was nothing short of brand assassination, and something Sega had done before. Sega Forever launched the year before in 2017 on mobile platforms, and much like Sega Ages, started with a bunch of games fans had seen too many times. Sonic, of course, was there, as was your usual assortment of Genesis stalwarts we see every couple of years in one compilation or another. There had been talk of Saturn, Dreamcast, and arcade games for the service, yet few ever showed up. It's been over a year now since a new game has even been released for the service, a sobering reminder that it's pretty much dead in the water. Now the same is looking guaranteed for Sega Ages. No games have been announced for the brand in quite some time, and of the games that were announced, we are down to our final release. Sega has also kept the entire lineup exclusive to the Switch, despite 150 million users on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. This kind of exclusivity is a head-scratcher itself, particularly since Sega's target demographic for these games will be older and almost certainly an owner of one of these other platforms. That leaves us with the depressing reality that once again, Sega has passed over its massive back catalog of releases and let any and all excitement fizzle out for these brands. They chose titles people had seen too many times, and then chose others that no one cares about. What should have been a celebration of Sega's past arcade might, instead became mostly about revisiting games we've had access to for the last four generations of hardware. In essence, the lack of variety has been lethal. Look, I'm no fool. I understand business decisions need to consider things fans don't often see. But if Sega is going to start a line of games called Sega Ages and Sega Forever, they need to understand who the hell they are targeting these titles to. They aren't courting 8-year-old little Johnny that only cares about playing Fortnite with his friends. They aren't trying to win over 16-year-old Wendy, who loves playing Two Point Hospital and Animal Crossing. They aren't gonna win hearts and minds of 20-something gamers fragging their college buddies in Call of Duty. Their targets are people like me. 
guys and gals in their 30s and 40s who were blown away by arcade games like Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder, Outrunners, and Daytona USA 2. These are the games we want to see. These are the games we loved back then and have never ever had a proper home version to call our own. These are the games we'll pay money to add to our collection. These are the games we await with bated breath. And these are the games that will reignite our passions for retro Sega again. Even more to the point, we want to see a return of Sega properties that haven't been released in years. Where is the remaster of Shining Force 3? The remake of Panzer Dragoon Saga? The sequel to Virtua Fighter 5? If Sega doesn't have a ton of faith to tackle these projects on their own, outsource them and get some help from passionate game developers looking to make their mark with a beloved franchise. There has already been success doing that with Streets of Rage 4 and a few different Wonder Boy remakes. A solid effort will draw fans, and the proof of that is easy to see. I can't tell you guys how disappointing it is to see Sega Ages and Sega Forever fade into nothingness with so many classic IPs untouched yet again. I mean, Sega didn't even really try to bring back any different titles to generate new buzz for these series at all. You can argue all you want that these games may not have the mass market appeal they need to sell well. But when you have no precedent whatsoever to even compare it to, it's hard to convince me of that. Sega chooses mostly the same games to add to these compilations and series time and time again. So the only thing we even remotely can ascertain is that they have faith in very few of their classic properties. And with that I can only say this about Sega. There was a time when they challenged the entire industry as its best-selling producer of hardware and software. There was a time when they made arcade games that were cutting edge and credited with inspiring some of the most prolific visionaries of an entire era. And there was a time when Sega had the confidence and faith in its abilities to make sure all its fans got a game experience they couldn't get anywhere else. Those blue letters your company uses to represent itself are more than just a name. It's a branding of excellence that has created irreplaceable memories for millions of gamers the world over. You are one of the greatest, and it's high time you started to act like it to your fans. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.